as we are progressing in in our um, format for the Coptic events, uh, we're going to be bringing in David for an interview. And just to kind of give a brief introduction for David, he's a coach and a counselor, and he promotes his work through a website called Transition Pathways. And to me, that seems to be the perfect name for someone who does the work that he does, because we're always in transition of one type or another, but we're usually not in need of help for most of the transitions that we're going through. And it's usually only those really intense, confusing transitions that we need help and, and guidance. And I know when I am facing difficult transitions, I am frequently reminded of the phrase, you can either laugh about it or you can cry about it. And most of the time I choose to laugh about it which seems to be David's philosophy as well, because he is definitely one with a very rich sense of humor. So uh, one thing that I would like to read off of his website that kind of gives a little bit more of a clue as to David here, uh, there's a phrase here that says, too many people struggle against the limiting beliefs and ways of their inner critic. That's why he offers counseling for healing coaching to gain self-mastery and achieve your potential, and energy leadership training so you can open your heart to others and fill the place of deep longing within. And with that, let's go ahead and bring David onto the, the virtual stage. And welcome, David. Um, thank you for playing this game with us. Yeah, my pleasure. Thank you for inviting me. And so, three. Yep, 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 definitely. Uh, so mm -hmm. I, I know I didn't really cover too much of your background. Is there anything else that you think that the average person watching the video after the event, I'm, I'm pretty sure most of those who are actually attending tonight know you quite well. But yeah. for those that would be new to you, is there anything else that I missed that you think should be included here? Uh, just a couple of things. One is a big part of my work is helping people remember what they've forgotten, that they are love, innocence, and goodness. And the other piece is to realize um, that there's always possibilities above and beyond what you've created in your life. And there's a phrase I often say to people, or a question, do you know why angels can fly? And the answer is because they, they take themselves lightly so a big key is not taking life so personally, but see it as a lesson like we're going to talk about tonight. So, yeah, yeah. Oh, that's 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 great because, yeah, if we don't see the possibilities, then why would we even bother trying to do more than what we're already doing? So yeah. very, yeah. very, very profound. Yeah, um, I, I know that you had um, submitted some information and the topic of tonight was essentially the the difference between the human perspective of life and the divine perspective of life and i think most of us at one time or another have had an experience that illustrates to us that proves to us on a on a deep visceral level that there is more to life than than what we see on the human perspective uh, but i guess i would like to um, have you share maybe a quick story of an experience that you had that helped you see life from that divine perspective instead of just the human perspective? Oh, okay. Wonderful question. Um, one, I'll illustrate what really got me going on my spiritual journey 30 plus years ago was going through a divorce. Um, and that, in my own grief of that, it really got me to begin to, to do more searching um, within myself and life in general. But the bigger one was uh, a number of years later, uh, the sudden death of a, of, a, of a girlfriend. And in that initial stage of grief, you know, your bargaining, your ego is, uh, you want it to be different. You want them back. And um, 
a profound thing that happened several months into that grief was, you know, the common theme of why me, poor me, and that victim energy such. Well, one morning I woke up and I said, why not me? What am I to learn from this and how can this make me a better person and such? And that began to really turn me around and open me up. Uh, for nearly two years, I was experiencing her in all kind of powerful and profound ways. And that's where I really realized this thing called death does not exist. It's just a transformation. Um, and what we have to learn and change, and especially in grief, when we lose someone near and dear, we have to learn to change the relationship to the relationship. In other words, they're in their formless realm and we're still in our human form, physical form, but they still want to have a relationship with us. So the key is we have to let go of, I want them back as I want them to be, as the ego would like it. And we have to accept, and in terms of moving forward in life, acceptance is a forward moving energy. And in the stages of grief, the final stage originally was acceptance. But they added a sixth stage about four or five years ago, and the, the, the sixth stage was finding meaning. So the importance of changing the meaning to the experiences and to begin to see it more from your soul's perspective, not just our egos. Because we got two, two minds, we got two voices, we got two agendas, we got the earthly ego agenda that wants it on its terms and its ways. And then we have the soul or the spirit agenda that's all about love, acceptance, forgiveness, compassion, and such. And it can see it from the whole vantage point, just rather than this isn't fair, why me, poor me. Um, and we all have an experience or experiences to wake us up, if you will. They're not, one of the biggest things I've come to appreciate is that our, our experiences are really not intended to be the enemy or the threat. They're intended to be the teacher and the opportunities. And I can definitely relate we make the that. choice which way we go. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, I can definitely relate to that because at one time I was looking back on my past, looking at all of the hardships that I'd gone through. And like you said, it's a matter of changing the meaning. It's like, well, if I went into the military, there's the basic training that you have to go through. And then that is just the basics. If you want to ascend to a higher uh, level in that organization, if you want to be part of a special team, you have to go through even more intense training. Mm -hmm. And so I started to look at the hardships of life as my training for whatever mission that I am to be assigned to somewhere down the, down the line. Yeah, very yeah. true. Yeah. yeah. So that that's where you discovered that there was a divine component to life as opposed to just the human perspective. Um, mm -hmm. Where where has that uh, realization led you since then? Um, <laughs> it's left, led me to two different sites around the world um, in terms of traveling and understanding more of the ancient cultures and how they lived, and how they were very much connected with the higher realms. Um, it's led me to uh, connect with a whole host of more enlightened people. Um, and it's also taught me, you know, just when I think I've got it figured out, <laughs> life is going to tell me otherwise. And some, not with the intent of punishment or anything, but just, David, there's so much more. Keep going. Uh, it never ends. Um, and I've really come to appreciate life is all about, the, the, the creator is all about creating, expanding, and renewing. It never stops. It's always in process. Um, and we are to live that same way, uh, to always be creating in some form, always be expanding, always be renewing yourself. Um uh, I tell people we're the only species on the planet that can be out of work. And I don't mean nine to five. 
um, once an animal decides they're done, they're going to get eaten. And many people, you know, they reach 65, 68, and they say they're done. I'm just going to chill out. And you might as well be dead. You know, and there's a lot more people now doing a lot of things. At, at 70, they're still working or traveling around the world doing whatever. And I think that's how it's supposed to be. We should always be moving spiritually, emotionally, socially, and such. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. It reminds me of the phrase, you're either growing or you're dying. It's yeah. one or the other. You can't do yeah. both or you can't do neither. Right. Yeah. So. So with all the travel and the lessons from, from around the world, um, how has, how, I, I'm trying to formulate my question here. Um, how has that shaped who you are today? Or how, how are you now because of all of that? Or? Yeah. Well, I've, I've come to realize, and some of this is from different readings as well as experiences. Uh, I create my own reality. I create my own experiences. Um, and everyone in my life is more the teacher and the opportunity in my life there. And uh, so there's something that I'm to learn from them and vice versa. And some of the most difficult or hurtful people in our lives are actually our greatest teachers. And I think the other thing that I've really come to learn and appreciate and it's really given me a, a, a sense of freedom is to realize the universe always has our back there's times we've all had moments situations or such and in the moment you're like how am i going to get through this how is this going to work and you're climbing you know you're coming out of your skin with fear anxiety whatever and um but as I look back on my on my short life, I, I'm 67 years old. Everything I've done, every experience I've had, every person I've met and such, good, bad, or ugly, in terms of experience, has gotten me where I am today. And so there's really been no wrong turns. Mistakes, what we call mistakes, the ego would say is a mistake, is just an opportunity for learning and growing. And it is through those mistakes, it is through those hard times, it is through that grief that there's an incredible opportunity to learn to be a better version of yourself and understand your connection to everything. Um, and so that's what I've really come to appreciate is that I'm connected to everything and everything is connected to me. I am that star we see at night and it is the star, you know, because the elements in the in a star is the elements that are in us. Um, so what I hear you saying is that there's never a time when we're completely on our own. We're we're always connected to more than ourselves. Yes, the the ego, the humanness, is all about individualization. When you can release that individualization and realize it's all about inclusion, it's all about connection. That is a game changer in your life. And now you're more in align with spirit and how it's really intended. And you're not just driven solely by your ego and such. And that's where we're coming more and more people are in, you know, it's all about, it's not so much about getting rid of the ego as it is transforming that ego to that higher knowing in way. And there's a lot of techniques I do with people where within the trauma, uh, they do it, they look at it from the human's element, and it's not fair, it's not right, this hurt me. I need you to do something different. And when we get into the higher, wiser self, a totally different perspective. And when you can integrate that knowing that is inherently in you, and really work it and begin to practice it, and realize that people are your practice field, <laughs> it's a game changer. Um, but that it's all a matter of which voice, the ego voice or the, the spirit voice, it's all a matter of which one we give the final say to. And we always have a choice. And when people tell me they don't, they, they, they don't have a choice, they just made a choice. <laughs> so, so in yeah. terms of the, the human mind, which you're calling the ego and the divine mind, 
um, both having a voice in here. To me, it seems like the best way to go would be to always follow the divine mind. And if my human mind is taking me or suggesting to me a direction separate from or different from what I feel like that divine mind is guiding me to, to always pick the divine mind. Is is that true? Or is there a time when we really should be going with our human um, desire to, to go a different direction? Um, push comes to shove. Uh, I'll answer that question with a question. And I'll use you as an example, Helen, if I may. Sure. sure. Okay. In human terms, how old are you? Uh, I turned 58 this year. Okay. How old is your soul? I have no idea. I mean, the the general theory that I believe is that everything was created in the beginning, and so it is essentially timeless, eternal. No. Okay. So, in the end, which one do you want to give the final say to, the temporary 58-year-old or the eternal? the one that's been around the block for eons. That, and when the other thing is I tell people, when you feel a sense of peace in your heart chakra and your uh, solar plex chakra, your, your third and fourth chakras, when you feel that inner peace in those two areas, even though what you might be going into or whatever, there's some uncertainty and such, but when you feel, oh, this feels right, then you know you're in alignment with your soul and the divine path. And even though we think we're separate, everything in the universe, there's there's contrast, there's opposites, but everything is intended to unite into one. And many of the masters, uh, Yeshua, Hamid Bey, you name them, they were very focused on unity consciousness and, and harmony and bringing the two opposites, what seems like opposites, to unity. And that's the goal of the, the between those two voices within us, the soul and the ego, is to bring the ego in line. It's not about getting rid of the ego, it's just bringing it in line mm -hmm. um, and getting it to see it from the higher, wiser, more loving perspective. Yeah. So what what if someone feels like they can't hear that divine voice, that the only voice they have is either their own voice or people they've known that have told them so many different things that they're just too confused to to find that divine voice? How would okay. you recommend they they yeah. look for or listen for? Yeah. N number one is to just breathe. When you slow the breath down and you get into that natural rhythm, that natural breathing rhythm of your of yourself, uh, that is one way of connecting to the spirit. Because uh, in Jesus' language of Aramaic, his word for breath was ruha, and breath, and that means spirit in Aramaic. So breath is your life force; it is the essence of your your spirit. And so just to begin to breathe in that gentle and rhythmic way is a, is a way to begin to quiet and soften the monkey mind or the ego mind. Most people do not realize we have anywhere from 40, 60, some say 90,000 thoughts a day. And 70% of those thoughts are stinking thinking. And they're very unconscious. So the more you can be aware of your thoughts and give it a different thought <laughs> in the next moment and because you created that original thought and it's usually based on fear i'm not enough and so on and so forth can you create a thought now that's based on love acceptance compassion and such and so whatever you've created you can create something different it's usually in a very simple way initially i create fear now can i create love it's that simple yeah, that reminds me of an experience that I went through quite a number of years ago, because at one time in my life, I 
was the type of person who would get upset and angry about just about everything. Any anything that didn't go right, I was I was very quick to to anger. And at at one time, I called myself a champion angry person. If there was an Olympics at being angry, I was probably a gold medalist for that. Uh, and then and then I started learning about all these different things about the power of the thought, the power of our mind, and we set our own direction by the thoughts we think and and those feelings. And I realized that by continuing that process of getting angry at everything, that I was just perpetuating a pattern that was not suiting me. And so I made a very conscious choice that I was going to change that. Like you said, if I can think thoughts of anger, I can think thoughts of love. And that's the direction I wanted to go. I wanted to develop that feeling of love within. And yeah. so I, I set aside time and I said, okay, I'm going to focus on love. I'm going to focus on love. I'm going to focus on love. And that first time I sat out and I made it for maybe about two minutes before another random thought went through my mind that caused me to get angry. And I went off into a rage and then yeah. realized that what I'd done to myself, it's like, okay, I need to try that again. So I kept going back to it over and over and over again until I eventually was able to turn that tide. So what you did, Alan, and this is a key, uh, those who take responsibility for their life and they quit the blame game and all that, they're going to be more responsive to life. Those that can't take responsibility for their life are going to be more reactive to life. And a big key is that, and I tell people, the day you can tell the truth to yourself about yourself without the shame or the guilt, you just call a spade a spade and you start to take responsibility for your life. You let go of blaming your parents or your ex-spouse or whoever. You change your life. That's the beginning of, of change. And it puts you in what they call more anabolic energy uh, rather than what they call catabolic energy. And catabolic energy is the victim and the fighter energy. The victim is, I hate me, I lose. The fighter is, I hate you, and I want you to lose. Once you move into responsibility, then it's about win-win. And you are me and I am you, kind of thing. Um, and that's a big key. Many people I see, once they can start to take that responsibility that's going to get them to move. If I can give you a personal, give you guys a personal story. Uh, when I was born, I was, I was born dead, an RH baby. And 67 years ago, uh, they just had discovered what to do, which means they had to do a total blood transfusion. And I tell this story to a lot of people because my story is your story and vice versa. Okay. And so because of the lack of oxygen, I'm literally deaf in one ear and can't hear, hear out the other, okay? And it took me 30 some odd years and a lot of trial and error and pain and whatever, because I would hide that disability, that flaw. If it's due to divorce that I got my hair cut too short and uh, I realized that I was hiding the hearing aids using the hair to hide it. And so I wasn't accepting the loss, the hearing loss. In that moment, I accepted the unacceptable. And this is the power of acceptance. My job as a therapist and coach requires me to listen to people, but I can't hear. And what begins to happen when you accept the unacceptable, you turn what you think is your flaws, your disabilities, whatever, into your gifts and perhaps even your livelihood. Most people struggle with accepting who they are. Uh, uh, who was it? Uh, Deepak Chokha has a wonderful quote, to be flawed is to be complete. It's part of the package. And we're given those flaws to learn acceptance, compassion, forgiveness, and that there's something good in what we've seen as our curse or flaws or whatever. And to me, acceptance, when you think of understanding, acceptance, compassion, and forgiveness, acceptance is the pivotal one and probably the most difficult for a lot of people. Mm -hmm. So, and the word compassion from the spiritual realm, or the word perfection 
from the spiritual realm means to have compassion for. The divine has compassion for us uh, and loves us regardless of what we do and how we play it out in this in this uh, dimension. Can we have that same compassion for ourselves? And that's a big key is to get that ego part of us, that wounded little boy or little girl, to bring her home to that or him home to that innocence and that love and that goodness that they've always we've always been. And that also is a game changer. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I can I can definitely see with that type of process how valuable it is to work with someone who already knows that pathway and mm -hmm. can can help us um explore that yeah. that new new way of approaching life there's um, a couple I'm work yeah if i may there's a couple i'm working with they, they lost uh, a daughter at 25 years old and you know as a parent your kids aren't supposed to leave before you are within their grief and their struggles within all the what they're learning and and changing within themselves and what they're healing within themselves because of that tragedy and that loss is such a joy and an, and an honor to witness and, and experience with them and they're beginning to realize that you know nothing is done to us it's all done for us and through us and it's really meant to move us along and, and i told them your daughter loves you so much that she was willing to leave in order for you guys to do what you need to do to heal and reconcile your your wounds. That's how the soul operates. The human ego says, oh, this is crazy. <clears throat> the, the soul is not threatened by the ego. The ego is very threatened of the soul because the, the ego feels like it'll be, it'll be the loss of the identity if I do this work which is so not true. The opposite is true. So, yeah, it does, yeah. does seem to me that the more I connect in with that divine essence, the more it is encouraging me to be me and mm -hmm. to be authentically myself, which plays into the things that I already enjoy doing. So it is, it is wonderful how that works. So much before, of, okay, oh, go ahead. I may go ahead. Just, yeah. yeah, much of depression is caused by not living our passions. Yep. We're living for someone else or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. So. Sounds good. So before I open the floor to questions from the rest of the, the, the group here, is there anything else you would like to, sh to share? Yeah. Uh, a famous quote, two things. Einstein one time was asked, and he was as much of a spiritual intellect as he was an intellect intellect. A reporter asked him, what's the most important question we should ask? And he looked up at the heavens and he looked down at the, the ground and then he looked back at the reporter and he says, the most important question we should ask is, do I see the universe as friendly or unfriendly? The key about that, the way he answered it, he didn't say the world, he said the universe. And the reason he said that the universe is because that's where we come from. The earth is part of the universe and not the other way around. We are part of the universe, not the other way around. So, yeah, the earth, our experiences aren't so pleasant and such at times. It is a challenge for sure. We've all chosen it. <laughs> but if you can see the universe that it has your back and you've made it this far, what's the problem other than what we create? So, yeah. No. And then the other thing, Tony Robbins. He said, the degree of uncertainty you can tolerate is directly related to the quality of your life. In other words, the more you can um, tolerate the uncertainty, the ambiguities and such, the better you're going to be able to move through the insanities of, and the ups and downs of life. Yeah. So. Definitely wonderful points to 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 transition with. So, okay, everyone, I'm going to open the floor uh, to any questions. If anybody has a question for David or would like to make a comment, share a story, now's your chance. Mm -hmm. 
I think you blow them away. They're speechless. <laughs> or, I, or I put them to sleep. I don't know which. <laughs> uh, I, I, you know, I, I can just jump in that, you know, it, it, 15 years ago when I, I listened to that little voice that sent me off to France all alone. I mean, that was so unlike tourists to travel that far. But I, I just followed that little voice. You know, we're, we're sitting here in this room where I, my husband had five years of cancer and this is where he left. And yeah, you know, that that was such a, it seems like it sucked, but it was the most amazing time of what to learn. So, you know, and now here I get the love of my life and, you know, we're having so much fun, but yet, yeah, it was digging through some trenches for a while. Mm -hmm. So here we are. Yeah. Yeah, I guess, I guess while we're waiting for someone else to come up with something, I can share a little bit that resonates with what you just shared, Therese. Uh, that experience of working with WSO, uh, the year that you were involved was just the first year. There was another year after that where I was involved in facilitating the, the group. And during that experience, I took on so much responsibility, not just for the WSO, not just for Coptics, but in a variety of other areas as well that I felt like I was overextending myself at times, but mm -hmm. I chose to embrace the challenge. And I chose to move forward with it, even though I felt it was beyond me. And what I found was that there was some part of myself, kind of like what David was saying, the universe is for us, the universe has our back. And what I found was that there was some part of me that was learning how to simplify things, how to make myself more efficient so that I could rise up to the challenge and, and meet that challenge head on. And, and just as, as one quick example, every time I had to do a presentation, which for WSO is usually a little 20 minute presentation, but even that, the way I had been doing it would take me two days to put together an outline, work out the ideas that I wanted to do, practice it a few times, and then to eventually give the presentation. And it was taking a lot of time to do that. And what I eventually found was that if I trusted the intuitive self within, that I could do the outline, I can say, okay, these are the points that I want to cover. And then I just took that into doing the presentation, which at that time we were recording videos. So it wasn't a live presentation, it was recorded. But I sat down pretty much here at the desk with the camera. I had my outline on the thing and I had a clock and I said, okay, I've got 20 minutes to do this. Start. And 20 minutes later, it was gonna be done one way or the other. And when I allowed myself to just flow and follow that intuitive voice within, I was surprised at how much better the presentations were than when I was doing it consciously. <laughs> it was well, amazing. Alan, Alan I, I listened to you just now, and I think that was a divine setup. You volunteered to do several things that kept you so busy that you didn't have time to sit and say to yourself, uh, I'm not going to do this. I'm not going to do that. Or I don't have time for this. And the other thing is, you're um, you're a survivor. You're you're you will succeed in whatever you choose to do. So spirit kept you so busy, and you had such an accelerated growth because your soul wanted to learn and the only way you were going to learn and succeed was to take on more than you could chew but you weren't going to let yourself fail so you see what a setup it was and what a um wonderful thing it was for you and for the people on the receiving end of what you chose to do yeah Thank and you, i would just you. add uh nancy uh I would say, he, and this is true for all of us, you're not surviving, you're thriving. Mm -hmm. Thriving, yeah. You're thriving. Right. There are three things we do, and any combination of these three, 
And most people do not like change, especially change that they didn't ask for or want or whatever. We either blame, justify, or rationalize, or any combination of those three. And when you do, when you go into any one of those modes, you're either going to be the victim or the fighter energy. You're going to be in those lower consciousness. And you're going to have that experience because that's what you're broadcasting to the universe. That's what you're saying you want. Re uh, repeat those again. Blame. Blame, justify, or rationalize. Okay. And a lot of times those are so subtle. Yeah. That you don't even know you're doing it. And another thing we do, and I... Typically, the first statement we say will be forward focus and kind of can do. And then your ego, the little boy or little girl is going to say, oh, but remember what happened when we were 10 years old? So you say, yeah, but. And once you say the word but, you're going to discount that first phrase that was positive, empowering, forward focus, can do. And you're going to be stuck then in, I can't, it's not going to work and all that. And a lot of times we, we do it so automatically that we don't even realize we've done it. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, the thing about looking back and especially of, of the ch childhood areas and that kind of thing, one of the lessons that I've learned recently is that if we remember <laughs> or at least realize that at some point we learned one of the most difficult things there ever is to learn, which is to coordinate hundreds of muscles and bones to stand upright, to balance ourselves and to move forward. And yet now we take it for granted because it is so easy to do all of that. Mm -hmm. And if we yeah. can do and that, look at how many times, yeah. yeah. How many times the baby falls down and stands back up <laughs> and keeps on trying, keeps on going. You said yes, yes, but if we can think yes and. Yeah. Yep. Has everybody got a difference. piece? Yeah. Has everybody got a piece of paper in front of them and a pen? Yeah. And Alan kind of said one of the words in this equation. Years ago, I came across a concept called STAR. So I'd like you to write the word star vertical, up and down, one letter under the other. Okay. And I'm going to give you what the letters mean. So the S is surrender. Now the ego's version of surrender, I give up, I lose, I'm doomed. Spirit's version of surrender is I let go with the intent of gaining more than I'm going to lose. That's true spiritual surrender. That's what Yeshua was teaching us in a lot of his teachings and such, and the way he conducted his life. So the first thing is surrender. From the surrender, the T is trust. And I'd like you to skip a few lines from the, from the R and write the word faith. Because there's a direct correlation between trust and faith, and I'll give you my acronym for faith. Up and so down. Faith, <laughs> yeah, up and down again. Yep. Yeah. So faith, the F is full, F-U-L-L. -L. The A is acceptance. There's the acceptance. The I is in, I-N. The T is thy, T-H-Y. And the H is heart. So the two key words in, in faith is acceptance in the heart. Because the heart is the most powerful organ in the human body. It is 5,000 times more powerful than the, than the brain. And the heart is the first organ that's formed in the human fetus. And it starts to beat before the brain is totally formed. Yeah, yeah we have three neurons. This has neurons, the heart has neurons, and the gut has neurons. The heart is the strongest and the most powerful brain in the human system. Many people have shut down their heart. They put a wall behind their heart because they've been hurt, they've been wounded, whatever. The medical community about six, seven years ago now finally came up with a diagnosis called the sad or broken heart syndrome, which is basically an emotional heart attack. 
There was a surgeon, a heart surgeon, a number of years ago in an open heart surgery. He literally could not penetrate the lining of the heart with his scalpel because this person had built such an emotional wall around their heart. Okay, S-T-A. And so, you know, and, and Jesus, a lot of, you know, he show, it shows him with an open heart. And that's the key. We got to open the heart back. Um, and that's where love, that's where the seed of love is, is coming from the heart. And But when you're kinking that energy in the heart chakra, everything else is going to go with it in that not so good ways. So be a star. So the from the T, the allow, the A is allow. And my definition of allowing is I stand like a mountain, I flow like water. The mountain is firm, confident, resilient. The water is flexible, adapting, and it finds a way to get over, around, and through the obstacles because it wants to get home to the ocean. In nature, wherever there's a, a mountain, there's water. They need each other, and one helps the other. The mountain is the masculine. The feminine is the water. The father, mother, God, the father is the intelligence, the wisdom. The mother is the love. And so that, that wisdom, that intelligence is uniting with love. That's God. And we are to do the same. Invite that intelligence from the higher realm. Invite that love in from the higher realms. Embrace it. That's who you are. And then go with it. Trust it. And so when you surrender, you trust and you allow, then you receive. The R is receive. And the key with receiving, I might not get what I want on my human level. It might not be what my ego wants. But it will be exactly what you need for your soul growth and evolution. And then the other part with the receiving is to feel worthy and, re and deserving of what you receive rather than push it away. So I found that acronym of a star to be very powerful, significant, and I, I use it readily in my life. I say to myself, okay, are you being the star? Are you surrendering? Are you trusting? Are you allowing? And such. And uh, it's worked. It's worked. As we walked the Camino, I remember that next morning running up to this guy I just met and said, what was that star thing again? And that was 15 years ago. Yeah. I just, yeah. I had a thing we were going to, we we're going to rendezvous. This is before I moved up here. We were going to rendezvous down in Mexico. I oh, was that's gonna a fly. long story. Yeah. A, a short story. I, was gonna, okay. I, I get to Milwaukee airport. I grabbed the, ramp, the wrong passport. I had an expired oh, I had to get down to to her within less than 24 hours. I didn't, I and I ended up getting a new passport. I drove all the way from Milwaukee to Chicago, got a new passport. She tried to find a flight, and the flight that she couldn't find, I ended up getting, and that's what got me to Mexico by the next morning. He comes into Detroit, but yeah. when they were going to bump me, they said, no, there's no other to get you to Mexico by two o'clock tomorrow. But yet he got the flight. <laughs> got that Mexico was three hours, three hours later when I booked it. But the whole thing, when that happened, I just said to the divine and said, I'm with you. I'll do what I got to do. Just get me to Mexico within 24 hours. And sure enough. And so I practiced the star the whole time. <laughs> that reminds me. I drove John to the airport one time when he was leaving for New York to meet up with all these people going to Egypt. And he gets to the counter and he doesn't have his passport. Oh my. <laughs> I had 30 minutes to book it home and book it back to the airport to give him his passport. I made it, but um, yeah. Here he was, a, a seasoned traveler, and he leaves his passport home. Oh. Angels flew you back there and, and, and time yeah. didn't matter. Yeah. And it's a good 20-minute drive one way. Yeah. Yeah. I probably broke every speed limit there was. but They gave you, they probably gave you green lights, you know, yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. 
And when I was standing in, in line in Chicago waiting, to, you know, to start the process, all of a sudden one guy says, well, you're going to need a photo. I'm like, what the hell? We're... I'll take a all picture. Sudden, another guy says, well, there's a Walgreens two blocks away. You can get, they got a photo booth. You can get your, you can take a picture. And so these guys that I was I was with, they're like, guys, can you save my place? And they're like, well, yeah, fine. Hurry up. Get going. And by the end of the, the process, we were all like a one big happy family, you know. And there must have been 400 people in line just that one day oh. that had mishaps with their passports. Mm -hmm. so we're not, you're not alone. Trust me. <laughs> so how did the star work out for you that time? Yeah. Yeah, well, you, yeah you got there on time. <laughs> yeah. So question. What do you want to know? I thought Laura. Well, I want to know. Oh, you'll need to unmute yourself. David, I want to know. This is kind of a personal question. But, okay, this great love of yours was with you for a couple of years. Does she stay with you still? Uh, there was a <laughs> moment in time, and this often happens. Uh, she's still, she's still there to a degree, yes, but it's not like it was. But there was a moment in time where I was uh, in a nature place, and I saw the, and she loved nature. She loved hawks, especially and, and eagles. All of a sudden, hovering over me was these two hawks just weaving in and out with each other. And to me, that message was clear as day that she was starting to move on. And she wanted me to move on. It was time. Okay. Incredibly powerful. Okay. I could tell you stories of how things that happened. It's, uh, some of them were downright spooky in the moment, but yet they were incredibly profound. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't, I mean, it had to be divine intervention. It was, <laughs> mm -hmm. it was incredible. Yeah. That's amazing. Back in the day, you told me that Mike, my first husband, came to David yeah. and said, Yep, take care of her. <laughs> he yeah. kind of passed me off. <laughs> yeah. Sorry. Yeah. yeah. But they want to have a relationship with us. But the key is we have to we have to realize we have to change the relationship to the relationship. In other words, we have to be willing to connect with them more on the soul, on the energetic level, not so much like this anymore, because this is gone. Yeah. Yeah. And when you can do that, my my oldest son, he had a bout with lung cancer and he shut his mother and I out of his treatment and such. So as hard as that was, I just asked his soul, can I connect with you on the soul level? And so that's how the relationship was with him for a while was my soul to his soul. Rather than wanting it on my terms, I just had to accept mm -hmm. his and he was a great teacher for acceptance. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. But that was, oh, okay, I'll take it to the soul level. And as long as I asked and I was granted permission, okay, let's let's have that relationship. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Yep. Go I ahead, Russ. Comment about the heart. Can you hear me? Yeah. Yep. Yep. Okay. Um, I would Watching this thing on YouTube, and if I could remember who said it, you would all know who he was because he's a very valued person in spirituality. And he was saying they've learned recently that the heart may be an organ that is more independent than the brain. Mm -hmm. And they've learned from heart transplants. And he just was telling stories, you know, an 80 year old woman got a heart transplant and she never liked beer or french fries or whatever. And she had gotten a biker's um, heart and those were her favorite foods now. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yes. It might have been Greg Braden, Bruce Lipton. Greg Braden, that's who it was. Yeah. Yeah. He does a lot. There's an organization called Heart Math, all one word, and he's connected one. They have done some incredible research on the heart, and they uh, there's this thing called heart coherence, which is um, gratitude, appreciation, and care, and, compa and compassion. 
they don't mention the word love, mainly because those other four words are pretty benign. Sometimes with love, like if all of a sudden two days ago you lost a loved one, you might be a little wigged out with love. So they use those other four words, even though they're directly related to love. Can you give them to me again? Um, and they, you go into your heart center. I've actually done some workshops around this where we, you go into your own heart coherence, you get yourself steady and such. And then you sit with a partner and you go heart to heart, sending that compassion and that, that uh, such to each other. And it's incredible. And then you send it out to the to the to the to the planet to humanity. So what are and those? They've, done, they've done experiments, huh? What are those words again? Compassion. Uh, uh, except uh, gratitude, appreciation, compassion, and care. And you want that first for yourself within yourself, and then you send that out to friends, family. Everybody. The planet. Yeah. I'm, I'm told everybody. I, I yeah. keep getting it. Yeah. Compassion, Don't gratitude. Compassion, care. Care. And when you're in heart coherence, they've actually done studies with brain waves and such. And it's amazing when you're in the energies of fear and such, how your your heart's all over the place. And you go into that heart coherence, and now you're more steady Eddie. Mm -hmm. And at the heart, what they found at the heart, the communication is going more this way than this way. And so when this is in more coherence, it's going to send more constructive and positive impulses to the brain. And then the brain will make different, more positive and constructive choices. Yeah. More questions. Come on now. You guys paid big money for big money for this. <laughs> yeah. Actually, I was just thinking it's about ten after eight, so maybe we should start winding things down. Okay. Okay. So. Well, I really enjoyed this tonight. I really enjoyed the interview process once again. Because I think we learned a lot with all of David's answers. You know? Thank you. Thank you. And Alan, you did a wonderful job of, of the questions. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. No pressure, Alan. You've done so well. <laughs> <laughs> like again. <laughs> Thanks for sharing, Alan. <laughs> well, I, I, I figure if I just simply listen to what he's talking about and ask what I'm interested in, that it will go in, in a direction mm -hmm. that's at least good for me. <laughs> you could be the next Johnny Carson. <laughs> He did listen. Yeah. <laughs> who's, the Don, who's the Don Rickles in the group here? Oh, he always had Don Rickles on his show. Yeah. yeah. Oh. Um, last question I would ask you guys. Oh. How many of you are kind of shaking your head with all the crap that's going on just in our own country right now, oh. politically and otherwise? Hey. Okay. I think I understand it. Yeah. So what I, I think the light of, has to be shown on all of these evils if we're yeah. going to ever do anything about them. Okay. So if you can phantom, everything is in divine order. Okay. And That's we're exactly, we're exactly where we need one. to be. The key is, is not to lose yourself in all the insanity that's going on. Try to put yourself in the eye of the storm. And don't let a lot of this define you because how uh, chaos is uncertain order. And as a humanity, for our since ever we've been on this planet, there's been struggle and progress, struggle and progress. And right now we're going through major struggles. But it's all part of the grand awakening. Okay. Jesus said in the parable of the vine, that the grapes are either ripe or unripe. In other words, they're ready for picking and wine, or they're not quite there yet. So we're all, and the way he equated that parable to the human consciousness, we're all at different stages of ripeness and readiness. Okay. A third of the population is leaving, as in the other third is going more nuts 
<laughs> the other third is waking up. Oh. You, you choose which third you want to, and you can see that playing out right now, big time. And so it's all in perfect order. Who do I want to be in all of it? That's the big key. This week, I've been listening to the 38th Annual World Congress of Illumination mm -hmm. with uh, Patricia Cota Robles. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that I've gotten out of this is to breathe in love and breathe out peace. And this will bring about a loving energy around you, which will affect not just you, but those who are all around. Um, the universe. Yeah. Yes, the universe. Because and we're in a time right now that is a transition. This is a very, very important time. Yeah. And so don't waste your time on anger or fear. Yeah. There is no need for that because we are uh, more powerful Light is more powerful. Love is more powerful than any of these divisive, um, angry feelings that are out there. And you can really see the ego. Thank you for that. You can really see the ego playing out. Hmm. And those who are coming more from the spirit of their soul essence. And so that, that division is becoming much more clear. And I think that's all part of the awakening as well. So... Yeah. Yeah. And what you were Very just true. talking about, Barbara, is exactly what I learned when I realized that I was focusing too much on anger and had to switch to love because however we respond to anything is the energy that is creating our future. So whatever happens outside of ourselves, we have a choice how to respond. And if we ask ourselves, what do I want to create in this moment, that guides our choice of responses. Yeah. yeah. When you were saying that at the time of your divorce, at the time of my divorce, I went to a class called You Are Greater Than You Believe. And I discovered Wayne, D Wayne Dyer's book, Pulling Your Own Strings. And that was the first time I realized I could control what I was thinking and feeling. And I didn't have to stay in a funk or feel depressed or stepped upon or anything else. I could turn everything around with my thoughts. And if it hadn't been for that, I wouldn't be here now probably in this group. But there have been just so many things that have been synchronistic that have brought me to where I am today and to, yeah. where, you know, to be with all of you. I'm, I'm in Ohio. You're in Michigan. I lived in Michigan for a short while. And, and it was because of this greater than you believe class that I went to a Coptic um, experience in Chicago, of all places, and there was a, a minister from the First Congregational Church, whom I had known when I had lived for a brief time in Michigan, who was the MC of the program, and I thought, well, this has to be real, because I know he's real. <laughs> <laughs> and it was through that that I met the Coptic Fellowship and Spiritual Unity of Nations, and, you know, and life goes on, and here it is another time in my life. And I'm so thankful and so grateful for everything that I learned through John Davis and Son and, and all of you. And you're going to make me cry because oh. I get emotional. <laughs> yeah. Thank you, Barbara. Thanks oh, for sharing. Thank you, Barbara. I think of you every group. time I make those peanut butter cookies from your recipe. <laughs> <laughs> and and realize, Barbara, you give as much to us as you as we give to you. Well, I love you all. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I think about, you know, no matter what's happening in the world, when people are getting angry, it's because they're afraid sometimes that they don't know where to go or what to do. And they need love. They're crying yeah. out for love just as much or more. You know, they don't realize that they can change. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I would like to thank you all <laughs> for contributing to that. Thank you, especially David, yeah. Therese. Thank you so much. 
Alan, thank you for facilitating such a very interesting and enlightening conversation. It was really wonderful to, um, to hear what you had to share, David and, Ter and Therese. So thank you so much. I would like to finish here, <laughs> close with a prayer. <laughs> so thank if you, you just take a deep breath and once again, bring yourself into this time and this space. Divine Creator, thank you for these evolutionary paths of universal experiences. Our spiritual school is filled with lessons continually propelling us on our path to our higher realization towards spiritual mastery. May we remain open and willing to fully living within the idea of a meaningful expression of our soul, learning and growing our way toward your love, light, and majesty. May we step into our responsibility to fully develop our gifts and purpose, to serve each other, to serve our communities, to serve our corner of the world, at our highest and best consciousness. With this, we say thank you, thank you, thank you, as we continue to become that example of your love, your peace, and your joy. Amen. Bless you all. Have a wonderful rest of your week. Thank you for being here. Thank, thank you. you. Yes. Thank, thank you all. Thank you. Good night, everybody. Good night. Good night. Good night. Just thank be loved. <laughs>